the double spend problem and how this and how this uh, works around that. Yeah, absolutely. And what it is. <laughs> sure, absolutely. So um, so going back to sort of the history of Bitcoin um, and, the, and blockchain, um, there had been a lot of attempts at creating digital cash before Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And um, what you're talking about, the double spend problem, um, is the issue that, you know, if you, if I have an apple, like a physical apple, and I hand you the apple, you no longer... I no longer have the apple and you now have the apple, right? It's like a physical object in space that we can mm -hmm. move. The problem is um, digital apples are not like physical apples, right? A physical, a, a digital apple, I can just create over like a picture of an apple, right? I can just copy and, you know. Because mm -hmm. it's a file. Right, exactly. And it's it's not the same thing as a physical object. And so this is the this is the problem with, you know, being able to transfer money digitally without using these centralized ledgers. Is if I want to hand you a $20 bill, I no longer have it, you now have it. If I say, you know, um I'm sending you $20, here's a picture of a $20 bill or whatever or, or numbers that signify a $20 bill, um, you know, that is um, something that you could then maybe spend twice, right? Mm -hmm. Like how do you keep track of whether you've spent it or not? And the answer to that is you have a public ledger that everyone can see where that where everyone knows you've already spent that right. that money, that value. And it's been verified by and, these miners, by multiple people. Right. And so as a result, that was sort of what the key insight sort of in the um the sort of creation of Bitcoin, right? So so back in 2008, there was this group of cypherpunks who- Who are um, cypherpunks? Um, these are people who are um, very passionate about cryptography uh -huh. and using it to, um, using it to uh, sort of evade- Are you talking kind of like the, the, the anarchy? No, not on anarchy, but- um... Uh, like hyper libertarian type. So, <laughs> I, so, so, um, so the cypherpunks are people like John Gilmore, who's the one of the co-founders of EFF, or Julian Assange, right? Okay, right. And mm -hmm. these are people who are cryptographers and who are very passionate about using cryptography to allow, you know, to sort of create um, a world in which people don't necessarily need to fear the government or th that things of that sort of nature. Um, and they had this thing called the cryptography mailing list, which was just a mailing list of a bunch of cypherpunks. Um, and um, these are people who are very influential sort of in the, in the early internet. And so back on um, Halloween 2008, oh, so uh, I know, so specific. <laughs> well, it's nice because you can sort of think back to like, oh, what was my Halloween costume that year? And you can yeah. kind of, right? Like if yeah. you can remember your Halloween costume on two, in 2008, you can like be like, oh, that's where I was the moment that Bitcoin sort of became a oh, thing. Isn't that cool? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like oh, I remember, you know, you sort of remember. You, you were just saying 2008. I'm like, God, oh, that seems so, I mean, I guess it was 10 years ago, but like 10 years is not a long time. Right. No, and it's not. Absolutely. Yeah. And and this was, so what happened was um, someone going by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto, um, a pseudonym, yes, Satoshi Nakamoto, um, emailed out a white paper to the group and said, here's my idea for this, you know, way to solve the double spend problem, this way to create a way to transfer value. And this was sort of the canonical paper about Bitcoin and what it is and, you know, how this would work and how this cryptography works. And so, um, you know, initially there was actually, it was just, it was just an email, like with this really short white paper, right? A little kind of anticlimactic. And, you know, there were a few emails back and forth about like why this is a terrible idea and won't really work. And then there were some people who said, oh, that's actually a really interesting idea. I'll help you like build the software for it. And, and, uh, ultimately, you know, and fast forward. <laughs> and that's how blockchain was created right, right blockchain and bitcoin simultaneously right because bitcoin is sort of the yeah right yeah, first use case of, of blockchain yeah yeah hey everyone thanks so much for watching the episode if you're interested in contributing to the conversation and supporting the show there's two easy things you can do one click subscribe and two visit our patreon page where you get exclusive access to the exploring minds community